All right, all right, all right. Welcome to the Firmware Emotive Podcast. You are listening to John Kai Herbert. And on this episode, I'm going to be talking about Elon Musk and doing a bit of a character analysis on him, talking about some of his past, talking about some of his human design, and just giving a little bit of an insight into how I think he's become the man he is today and how that affects um, himself, his business, his family, and us. Okay, so if you're listening on your podcast on your phone or just the audio, awesome. If you'd like to view the slides that I made, you can jump over to my YouTube channel and listen along, look along, take screenshots if you want to. That ticks a box for you, ticks a box for you. So without further ado, let's get stuck into some musk. Uh, so the sources for this I've grabbed from Forbes, Rolling Stone, Business Insider, The Verge, Wikipedia, YouTube, and Twitter. And a lot of these sources had anything from like his past relationships, um, little snippets of um, like quotes from like when he's talking about his dad or his mom or his brothers or his siblings his business, how he sees his family, how he sees his relationships. And I've grabbed some of his quotes and put them at the end. So I'll talk about those towards the end of the podcast. And if you're looking at the slides, you'll see them there too. The overarching themes I'm going to be exploring um, will be, excuse me, how our childhood shapes our future and our impact on the world. The shadow of intellect and saviors as fiends um, and by fiends I mean uh, demons um, how sometimes we want to put people in a savior position and we don't really understand like what their their their, their motivations and their intentions are although their their delivered product might feel correct for the time however without exploring like what their <laughs> like who they really are you don't really have an understanding about what they are um, or what they're really wanting to achieve. So, character structure indicators. So, I watched some videos on how Elon moved and how he sits for various like interviews and um, how he dances. Um, and for me, what stood out for me was like there's two main character structures that that he falls into, and that's the schizoid and the rigid, and there's, I've mentioned this before, there are five character structures and these two are the dominants for him, I feel really stand out. And for the schizoid, like it's in his eyes, um, there's like an element of, um, it can be like sometimes he's not all there and um, and there can be, a, uh, yeah, an element of terror in there at times too, depending on what the line of questioning is. Um, his shoulders um, are kind of like leaned over a bit and they look a bit crushed. Like, um uh that he he kind of like doesn't doesn't the weight of the world kind of crushes him a bit and he leans his head forward um he's got a bit of a left right imbalance like sometimes it looks like his eyes kind of like do separate things they kind of dart um left and right um his intelligence like <laughs> genius level intelligence um very quick with numbers very quick with um things that take non-schizoids or your average human a little bit longer. Shallow breathing. Um, I very rarely see him take a really deep breath into his diaphragm. It's it's a, a sign that you, you're afraid to be in your body and there'll, there'll be a lot of rigidity around his lungs and, and um, yeah, a lot of rigidity around his chest. Um, he's a bit awkward relating. So he knows how to act, and then when it's something authentic, he just doesn't really know. He's kind of like a bit shocked and jarred. He doesn't really know how to relate to people. Um, and there's twitching. He does this odd, like, like twitching, um, which is a schizoidy thing where, like, your your body wants to react in a certain way. It's almost like, yeah, like suppressing it, or it feels, like, awkward. So, like, something else trying to burst out of him that's his real self. Uh, also, 
the rigid component. So for him, what I saw was like how he stands and sits. So depending on what he's doing, like if he's feeling like super confident, like he'll be like his power, like he'll be talking to someone who he feels like he's better than or and his, his whole posture changes and that's very much a rigid thing. Um, he, he knows how to situationally behave, situationally behave. And what do I mean by that? Uh, he, he caters to whatever party he is with, which is a great trait of a leader. And uh, the unconscious component is he doesn't really know who he is authentically. So there's a part of him that acts inauthentically to make sure he's like accepted. Um, uh, surprise environment, he's unsure how to react. So that's also a rigid thing as well. And then how he dances and walks, like I mentioned this just before, like if you've seen him dance, like it's, there's no fluidity in his body. Um, it's very awkward, very jarring. Uh, he doesn't really know how to move. Um, his left, right imbalance comes out quite a bit when he's dancing. Um, and his relationship history. So he's had a lot of um, female partners. And when you have a lot of partners and you can't keep a, a long-term relationship, this tends to be a rigid thing where you can't really open your heart to someone fully. You can't be vulnerable. Um, you really find it hard to express your feelings in the, in, because you're afraid of being rejected. And that'll, that would have played out in, with, the, with his mum, where I feel like, I'm going to jump around a bit here, like when he went to live with his dad when he was nine, um, his mother um, was really upset with him about that. Like I think she felt quite unloved by that. And then um, I don't think she really forgave him for it. So... Um, other trends, so trends here, I'm jumping to trends. So for the schizoid, there's early rejection. Um, he feels like quite alone and afraid. And he's mentioned this, I've got quotes about him saying like he feel he doesn't want to like be alone. And, and if, you, if you are alone, you tend to be afraid. That's why he wants people around. Um, there's an inward, inward terror. So he's inwardly terrified. Uh, he uses sex. I feel that he uses sex to feel. Um, so schizoids use, quite, quite self-explanatory, they use sex to feel. So the act of um, sex helps them in their feel like they're in their body and it's a pleasurable sensation. So on the flip side of like being alone, like the terror of being alone and that existential, existential anxiety um, that's offset by sex. Schizoids also have a very black and white thinking. Um, so it's either all this or all that. And he's got that in him. Uh, he was bullied as a child. And schizoids get bullied a lot um, because they're not really in their bodies and they can't really put up a fight, um, shallow breathing. And he struggles trusting, which is another schizoid trait, because he has a fear of life, an undertold fear of life. There's a part of him that just struggles trusting and trusting at an emotional level and at an intellectual level. So I'm sure he'd, I feel like he would do a lot of research on people that he's about to do business in um, because of how he's been hurt in the past. Um, on that bullied thing, um, he also learnt martial arts. So when he was bullied as a kid, like he, at, one, at one point he was hospitalised for how bad he was bullied. This was when he was in South Africa. The rigid character structure trends is it tends to be exploited by caregivers. So I feel like he would have been exploited by his dad and potentially his mum. I feel like there's a good chance his dad tried to compete with him a lot and maybe his mum as well. Um, he can very efficiently separate thoughts and feelings, and it's a very it's a split in the rigid. Um, and Schizoid has it too, but the rigid can do it much more efficiently. Where, as in one of the interviews, he, he really clearly does this. The interviewer asks him a very heartfelt question, and he drops into an emotion really quickly and then comes straight out of it. So he doesn't feel the whole thing. It's like, oh, it comes back into like this logic point of view. Again, hard to keep relationships. Um, relentless achieving. So. The rigid can also be known. The non-pathological term for a rigid is the achiever. And they can just feel like 
they don't feel good enough at the core, which comes from their parents or caregivers not accepting them for who they are. Um, so they're always trying to be something that they're not, and they were rewarded for achievements, whether it's academic, sporting, whatever. And, and based on Elon's past, he's got a lot of achievements um, when he was younger. The rigid also knows how to act and behave. Again, that's inauthentic. And he grew up much faster than his age. So, um, yeah, that's quite self-explanatory. So he didn't really have like a childhood to be like, you know, like an innocent, explorative child. I'll also jump into some jump into some hyperdimensional components here. So it wouldn't be a podcast without some hyperdimensional <laughs> spiritual stuff. <laughs> so the schizoid is readily attacked and sapped and influenced by entities uh, due to the unwillingness to accept being in a body. So the part of him that is ungrounded and likes to be super intellectual, um, that's he's not being in your body, you're ungrounded. So your food, food for looshing off, um, the eagerness to abdicate to unnatural thought forms due to the violent rage of concept of God's source and humanity. So the part of him that is fucking pissed off at his dad and pissed off at humanity, um, uh, he suppresses that, bypasses it, intellectualizes it. However, there's an undertow, there's like a massive vat of like <laughs> rage there uh, around like humanity. Um, the rigid, um, the hyperdimensional components for the rigid, uh, its inability to open the heart amplifies and attracts hexes and entities that keep thought forms in control. Um, and then the heartless sex reinforces armoring around the heart, attracting succubus and Jezebel embodied partners. So, like, it's, it's, this is just an energy, it's not personal. So, um, because he has a closed heart, he's going to attract women that also have a closed heart or like, like value like intellectual things or um, academic things. And, and then as soon as you like, want to open your heart, you can't because it's, it's such a well of brokenness in there. Um, and then the hexes. So like hexes around like this, this endless thinking. Like I'll mention this again. I'll mention it now as well. Like he would take um, pharmaceuticals to get to sleep. And there might also be a chance that he uh, like might smoke pot or something else. I'm just going to put some something on my drum over here. I can hear it resonating. Um, he might take pot or something else to try and numb his feelings. So um, I'm just going to jump to the next slide here. Um, talking about pot, like clients that I have that have spent quite a long time having pot really have struggle feeling, especially if they've they've taken they've smoked it. Um, I feel like um, edibles has a different experience and smoking it like just numbs all your feelings. So it just suppresses everything. The caregiving environment. So I was fucking heartbroken when I looked at Elon's past. Like that man, um, fuck. His whole family's kind of, um, his whole family has been achievers and it looks like like his his dad's dad and like grandparents like there's this 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 element of like um, I feel like he may have had a connection with one of his his, his grandparents on on his mother's side maybe um, like either a spiritual connection or something that was much deeper however like the caregiving environment for him like his father was an engineer and a really good engineer in South Africa like lot lots got accolade like an, it was the first licensed engineer in in South Africa um and his mother was the oldest model, um, declared like the oldest model. She was a single mum when they got separated, so he got his parents divorced when he was about nine. Then his mother worked like four jobs at once. However, there was a lot of emotional neglect there, um, achievements over emotions. Um, There's a lot of status involved, so status was put on a pedestal, wealth was put on a pedestal, academia, inauthenticity, so not being able to express your feelings puts you in an inauthentic place, which creates a lot of rigidity in the body. Uh, competition, so I see like his his dad and his mum competing with him, either for love or attention or using 
using Elon against the other as a kind of like a weapon. Um, so there's a lot of dysfunction and multi-generational shame. So he grew up in South Africa and there m might be some overlays with the apartheid and um, and his father. So there could be some multi-generational shame there uh, around his father and then that being passed to him. Uh, now, Elon... Because he, he's got that schizoid and that rigid trait, um, he builds a lot. So he's built some amazing solutions for things. I'm going to, I'm going to talk about his, his most recent four. I'm not going to talk about PayPal. Uh, so Tesla. Your mainstream is most noted for Tesla and creating like solar banks and, and technology for solar power and releasing patents for solar-powered cars and, and, and technology behind them. And I feel like, like in that schizoid place, like you can come up with solutions for things really easily, and this will double back into his human design, where you can come up with answers for things really quickly. You can intuitively gauge, oh, this is this is what we need to do. Solar, you know, solar is free. Let's do that. And it can also, like when it doesn't come from a heart space, it can just be all heady. And like you don't holistically look at the problem, you just go to oh this is an issue let's deal with that. Again, I feel like it's a, it's a, it's a solution. Like, is it a solution or is it hacking at the leaves? Like, what's the what's the overarching solution here? Because to the resources required to um, manufacture those cars is a lot. You got like the mining of the lithium and um, this, the resources required is a lot. And like, if it was me. And I sat down with Elon and I said, Look, bro, I think we need to redesign the combustion engine. That's where I would go. Um, and then have something other than electric to power the cars because you still need something to charge. And for me personally, I reckon if you redesign the combustion engine to make it much more efficient, that would be a better way to go. Power to weight ratio, the whole shebang bang Um... SpaceX. Now, uh, I see that to like the answer to not being on Earth. Like, he doesn't really like Earth. I feel like he doesn't like really being in his body. And a lot of what he wanted to create comes from his early childhood around reading science fiction books. So he was a big fan of Isaac Asimov. Asimov. Oh, I can't remember how to pronounce his name. And so when we look at the past and how he escaped the pain of his reality um, was reading books and reading books about sci-fi. And this has flowed into his present of where he's at, where he's got resources now to, to spend into his solutions, and this is what he's doing. So again, like is it a solution or, or hacking it leaves? Like he wants, he's putting satellites in orbit so everybody can have internet. Um, and it's like, well, okay, cool. Um, what's the heart? What's what's the heart say around that? You know, what's the what is that a solution for us? Is 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 having internet everywhere via satellite a solution, like a sensible one, like a heartfelt one, or can we do it another way? And uh, like, I feel like giving other parts of the world access to information, which used to be. Uh, uh, like a barrier for entry to survival, like knowledge was a barrier to entry for survival. Now everyone can have it. It's like, I'm all for that. Because I feel like everyone needs to go through that place to, to understand and, 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 and see if the emperor is not wearing any clothes. Like, see what's going on in the world. Like, particularly in China, like the comparisons of like free speech and um, like what, what free speech is like in other parts of the world. Um, being able to express your opinion without being dragged into a reprogramming camp. Then the boring company. <laughs> I, I do enjoy Elon's sense of humor. Um, and that was like an answer to like commuting and to get from places to place to place faster. And, you know, is that a, an answer to the frustration or, or lack of progress in other mass transit systems and, and taking more cars off the road, which I think is a fantastic idea. However, like, um, what does it mean for the earth? 
Uh, I mean, like, LA is a fault line ridden state, and um, what the ground is not a friendly place. The whole planet <laughs> isn't the best um, friendly place for for tunneling and 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 going underground. However, again, is like, is, is this a solution or hacking at leaves again? Like, how many people need to commute? Like with the lockdown, a lot of people have been working from home. It sounds like why, 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 do, why don't we do something else? Like why have another mass transit system where people just don't refuse to communicate with each other again? Like it's it's again like his ideas might be fantastic and he's easy. We we worship entrepreneurialism. We worship like creative thought. However, we don't really ask like okay, come into a heart space like. What do you really want to do, Elon? Like, what do you really want to do? Like, are you doing this because you want to save the earth or save like that inner child in you that was terrified? Uh, and then the most recent one that's got a lot of attention, um, product-wise, is his Neuralink. And I feel like that's a, a big shadow of of the intellect, where like, he's aiming to get like a symbiosis with artificial intelligence. So Musk Musk perceives like general AI as an existential threat to humanity, and um, the Neuralink would be an advantage for people with like neuroprosthetics. And um, I, I feel like he's trying to future proof humanity in the framing of technology and, and cybernetics. And ah, this is such a slippery slope when it comes to technology. Like, no one really asks like the morality and the ethics behind it. We just kind of do it. And if we don't do it, China does it. So I was like, well, someone's got to beat someone to the punch to get their to get their leg up and the leg over or whatever analogy that you want to use. However, like, so if you have, if you're missing an arm, if you're missing a leg, or if you've been made a paraplegic, or and um, and you want to be healed and you want to have that sensation back, like. You can either pay like fifty thousand dollars to have like someone pray over you and see if that works, um, or you can go through the government or and other technological private avenues and get a prosthetic. And right now, the technology in prosthetics is incredible. Like we're seeing like people being able to see, people being able to have their arms back, and being able to control them with their mind. And for me, like quality of life, like when I've when I took care of an ex, um, when I was a full time carer, um, the quality of life is a big deal. So I feel like for those of us that do have all working limbs, to have some compassion for those that don't, and and these are the solutions that we're providing at the moment. This is the this is the this is where our technology is at at the moment, and our mainstream technology is at at the moment. So um, I feel like that's the Neuralink has got benefits um, for those that are in certain positions. However, for those of us that um, I've come from a transhumanist community, and for those of us those of us that feel like the body is weak in those communities, um, I don't feel like that anymore. I, those of us that want to like plug ourselves in to the world wide web or want to have a direct interface with technology then this is where that goes and the, and the cyberpunk type um, dystopian <laughs> realities where there's a, a game that I used to play called Syndicate Wars and everyone had a chip in their head which kind of augmented their reality so they could instead of this drab and dark city landscape of the, of the future everything would be like overlaid like augmented reality wise with something that was pleasant like where there was like maybe like a dead body in the street or a or a homeless person that was you know, sitting in their own feces you'd look at it and the chip would reprogram that to maybe be like a flower bed so there's like this a further disconnect of reality which could come from technology like this, where people don't want to own their feelings or own the humanity or own the part of them that is helpless. Um, and, then, and there's a component that could be healing for others that, that, that struggle with it. 
This concept of the general AI as an existential threat to humanity is a, is a reoccurring theme, and Elon was part of the board for OpenAI, which was they were trying to find a way to curb the existential risk of artificial intelligence. This is general AI. We already have AI. This is general a general AI, um, where the, the AI is only as strong as the programmers and programmers are human and they are inherently flawed and they do not operate from a heart space. So I feel like he, we are right to be concerned that general artificial intelligence is a concern. Um, however, the, the schizoid and rigid tie-in with this is like, well, he's come up with a brilliant idea. Um, this The schizoid component being terrified of life, being scared of life and wanting to head things off at the pass at a, at a, at a headspace. He's come up with this concept, and then the rigid component. He's efficiently completing it. Like he to argue him down would require humility, and rigid's an unaddressed rigid is not good at that at all. And this has got that black and white thinking, and with the rigid that 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 lack of humility, like it's 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 in, in, in especially for men in general, like it's a big theme in men. However, it's just to have that humility to go, humility to go, oh, well, you know what? I could be wrong here. Um, he's got too much at stake, like stock price, uh, appearance, um, how he thinks his family sees him, all that kind of stuff. And his workers. So there'll be a whole tie in of like <sighs> lots of things. However, the newer link is the, the main thing at the moment that's, get, that's getting a lot of attention because it is a, it is, um, an invasive device that puts webbing inside the brain. Um, it's, it's like for me, like the intellectual component for me. When I look at the technology, it like it, it's it's exciting, it looks cool. And then in a heart space, I'm like, fuck! Like, are we doing the right thing here? Like, are we do we really want to disconnect ourselves further from reality? Do we really want to be plugged into something? And how do we trust it? Like, it's it'll be two way. Like we don't know how our body's gonna really react to it in the long term, and so like for me, from my heart space, it's like, yeah, my God, are we really doing the right thing? Elon's father. Okay, I'm just coming off the back of the the Neuralink. I was just, I'm wondering if Elon feels like his the how his father was is how the artificial intelligence could be. So the way he talks about his father is like quite a malevolent human being at his core. He's got like the evil component, and Elon's going to have that in him as well. No matter how hard he tries to like suppress it and repress it, it's in him. And I feel that when you when you do shadow work, you own that, you own that 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 evil inside of you. Otherwise, it's going to come out in some other way. Like he might feel like he's doing, act like actively doing everything opposite to what his dad would do. However, it's going to come out in some other way that he's unconscious, that he's he's not aware of. He can't possibly think of all conceivable outcomes. You just can't. You get much closer when you operate from a heart space because you have that connection to, to something that is much bigger than you that thinks so many steps ahead, so many different avenues. Like father, like son, how the template of the past repeats without dedicated inner and outer work, just like I was saying. Um, like Elon's, Elon doesn't talk to his father anymore. Um, like his father had sex or had a child. I can't remember if it was sex or had a child with his stepdaughter. So, I mean, like, that's, I'm not like, sex shaming him there however at a, at, a, at a moral and ethical point of view it's like well what are you doing man like what are you really doing you know at a heart space like what 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 where were you at like where is your heart and I'm just, i've got a picture of him on, on my slides here in youtube and like you can you can see like there's there's a there's a coldness and 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 sadness in in both elon and his father's eyes where like they're there and they're not there, and they they'll be whoever you want them to be, as long as they get the praise, as long as they get the admiration for being who you want them to be, um, which which comes from like that 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 rigid wounding, um, more early life stuff. So 
again, I, I mentioned that his parents divorced when he was nine years old. When he was nine years old, that's that's in 1980. Um, so being bullied at school and being emotionally abused by his father, like that sets your ACE score high. Um, so ACE scoring, and I've mentioned this before in another podcast, adverse childhood experience. So it makes you pre makes you predisposed to health issues later in life, um, drug abuse, um, failed relationships, all kinds of stuff. And in that in that space, like I feel like Elon felt really unwelcomed and un- unsafe in his early years. Um, if they got divorced. When he was nine, there's a good fucking chance there was pre-existing tension in the in their relationship. Like, yeah, and then vicarious vicarious trauma about being in the apartheid. So who knows what was on the news? Who knows what his mum and dad thought about the blacks and what the blacks thought of them? So it's um, there's a lot there. In 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 this man, so I feel like um, his early life was quite hard. And I don't know what kind of therapy he's had or, or, or what kind of guidance he's received or what kind of heart space he's received or like even his closest um, like right-hand man in, in at Tesla only just saw him cry for the first time. Like I'm not tooting my own horn here, but like between Eric and I, like we cry, we cry often in front of each other. Um, and feel it's it's correct, you know. If you can't be completely emotionally honest with your business partners, who the fuck can you be openly honest with? But these people start know you better than some of your family members. Like I think it's important to be able to show that vulnerability. It doesn't mean like you're gonna collapse. It just means like in that moment you needed to cry, you needed to feel some shit. So just feel it, allow it. And you, you can move through it. However, if you're feeling unsafe, like I think it's really hard. And for him in that interview to express what he was feeling, like chips to that brother, like seriously, if if he was able to cry like that. And I feel like his, his, having his kids there was also um, part of that blessing. Like I feel like his kids really open up his heart. I want to talk about relationships with offspring. So I feel like he's doing the best with how he was raised. Um, like he grew up very fast and I feel like his kids have grown up very fast as well. Like in one of the interviews, um, his 13 year old explained to the interviewer what like, um, shorting, um, the shorting of the stock market is to some of his Elon saw that someone was shorting his stocks. Um, I feel like for him, like he was emotionally stunted. There's a good chance that his offspring will be emotionally stunted, particularly after his divorce. Um, they, they, his, his, the partner that he had his children with, um, d- were divorced. So that creates huge trauma for children being without their, their mother and their father. And there's a good chance there was also tension in that existing relationship with Justine, her name was. And I'll touch more about his relationships with, with, um, women in a minute. So they're intellectually nurtured. So I feel like his mum and his dad intellectually nurtured him and he will do the same with his offspring. He takes them camping, which I feel like that may have been something how his dad tried to connect with him. Um, and it also feels like it's a... Kind of like oh, My heart breaks. Like It could also feel like it's just a part of him that, that feels like that's what dads do. You take your kids camping. That's how you bond with your children. You're around and you do camping things. But when he's camping, like, oh, I wonder, like, how much is he actually present with his kids? Like, um, with, like, four businesses on the go. Like, um, yeah. Nannies. So, he has nannies. Even to the point of, like, they had so many nannies that they had a nanny manager. And I feel like this ties in with his relationship with his mum around her outsourcing emotional things to other people. I feel like um, his mum really wasn't emotionally available for him, and she still isn't. I think she, uh, having, she has, she's happy that she has grandchildren, then she moved to California to be with the kids and see them. However, it's more of a, I feel like it's more of a token gesture, and she doesn't really know how to fully express how she feels. 
Um, so like children as trophies, like achievements. And I feel there's an assumption that being physically there is the same as being emotionally present. Like I said before, um, he feels, he truly feels like that as long as he's physically there with his kids, then, you know, his kids, he's loving his kids. Now, for a schizoid, you, you're energetically, you are not fucking there. You could be sitting in the room with someone and their body just isn't there. And I've, 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 I've experienced this with people meditating that I know that are schizoids. Like, I'll just have a look over at them and I'll, they're, like, they're not in their body. Like, they're energetically, they're somewhere else in the fucking astral plane. And then with Musk, he's like in his job, he's in his phone, he's in the technology. You know, he's not physically there for his kids. And his kids will feel that. Um, and I feel like he also had kids to not be alone. Like, achievements. Like, to, they are the love of his life, he says. Um, and I feel like he, he had them to not be alone. Um, that's part of his shadow. Like, I'm sure he loves them to the best of his ability. However, I feel like there's that undertow and the unconscious that he had them to not be alone. I mentioned before Justine, his first wife. Um, when they met, like, she was reciting um, how they met, and she remembers that he gave her his credit card to buy books. And that's how he wooed her. That's how she remembered how he wooed her. And like when I looked at that, I was like, fuck, like, like equating finance with love, like equating buying, being able to buy things with love, um, which is what Justine, that, that, and what I mentioned before, like the succubus type energy and the, like the um, Jezebel type energy, like it's, it's that kind of energy. It's, it's unconscious and it's not personal, it's fucking the energy. Um, and they got married in 2000. Um, then this is, this is heartbreaking. Like they lost their first son to SIDS in, uh, in 2002 and he was only 10 weeks old and so Justine put him down on his back and um, at, at 10 weeks of age is the, between like 10 and 11 weeks is the highest risk for kids to, to die of SIDS. And so they, by the time she was able to get there and get the ambulance there, like he'd already, like, he'd already lost way too much um, oxygen to the brain. So he spent um, three days on life support before they made the decision to, to let him go. And like a death of a child is like, it, it's traumatic. And um, if you're a schizoid or if you had schizoid tendencies or rigid tendencies, like there's a part of you that won't want to feel that because it will remind you of just how fragile your life is, how fragile life is in general. And like all that joy of creating something with someone that you love, creating a being with someone that you love, like for a rigid, like just armor up your heart big time. So, like, ah, I'm just gonna sit in that for a minute. It's um, yeah, man, I, I feel for Elon on that. That's um, it's tough for him, and it's tough for both of them. Um, also, Justine wanted nannies, so and so did he. So like, straight away, it's like they don't really want. They didn't really want kids to be like parents, like loving parents, which I'm judging them for. That is how they would have been raised. I'm assuming Justine was raised a similar way, otherwise she wouldn't attract and be attracted to someone like Elon. So this is why I feel like doing inner work and outer work is so important before you have fucking kids because it just passes it on to the next generation. So they wanted nannies. Um, and then straight after um, they lost their son, she went to an IVF clinic to try and have another one. Um, so I don't know what the background is to having the IVF. I don't know what the emotions were around it. However, it just feels like that pushing of nature, that pushing of the nature and suppressing the feelings that I want, 
like that shadow of like no, nature i hate nature i'm not going to learn whatever the lessons are like maybe we weren't ready to have kids so they're going to push it so they ended up having twin sons in 2004 via ivf and then triplets in 2006 via uh, ivf and like this this feels like like this is where you you don't have, you don't listen to nature you don't learn the lessons and you keep pushing and then you create um you create something which may or may not be out of integrity out of alignment with what needs to happen at a collective level um, and then they divorced in 2008 so over that timeline um i'm sure that there was stress in the family like they had to have nannies to help raise the kids and um so yeah they divorced so again like the next generation that generation um trauma a scores like and it'll if they don't address it just compounds and concentrates into the next one so um like i mentioned before yeah, there was a nanny manager there was so many nannies so how can how can a child get any kind of consistency as to what they want what they need emotionally when you have people coming in and out of the house different energies like it's ah it's just it's it's what we do when we live from the head so in this in that component it's like we're like it, we're living in a world where success growth and the stock market value and achievements are put on a pedestal it's like you don't stop and look at what you're actually doing from a heart space you end up like rah 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 pushing not checking in like what's my shadow like what's my unconscious here why am i doing this like why and that requires you to stop and feel your feelings get in your body and that, that shit is scary so to all those out there that are doing the inner work like and the outer work like chips high five you know, it's it's important. I feel it's super important. So after that divorce, he he started dating uh, Tallulah Riley, um, and she tried to make it work with him. Like she tried to, I got a good vibe from Tallulah. You know, she it felt like she had a really good energy, and she really tried to like I feel like open Elon up a bit. Um, and she really tried to fit in with his life with his kids. So they were married in 2010. So divorced in 2008. From jumping back a slide. 28 divorced, then 2010 remarried to Lula Riley. They divorced in 2012, and they remarried again in 2013, and then divorced again in 2016. Um, so again, like that that relationship, like it really feels like they fucking tried. Um, and to Lula, like I just. I feel like all the women in his life could see his potential, and I think Tallulah um, just had the biggest heart out of all of them. Uh, then 2016, 2017-ish, he dated Amber Heard. Now, Amber was either married to or dating Johnny Depp, and she's the one that was rumoured to be physically and verbally abusive. Um, Depp is also a schizoid. Um, so, Depp was bullied as well as a child. However, his mother taught him to stand up for himself. And then in a recent interview with Depp, he said um, uh, he would destroy anyone who bullied his kids. So you can see how, like, like when, when schizoids are created, um, when they're feeling unsafe as a child, manifest as bullying, and then you counter that by by being more violent, by being more to to not be hurt to not be bullied anymore and if you don't address that underlying fear the underlying terror you tend to kill someone like you tend to just like you can snap and all that all those techniques that you've learned you just end up really hurting someone 2018 Elon started dating Grimes um the musician uh, who's also a schizoid and a very intelligent woman um so her mother's her Grimes's mother's like a crown was a crown prosecutor and her father was an ex banker and worked in the business side of biotech. Grimes also doesn't give the name of her father, um, which is which is interesting. Um, she talks about her mother though, and then in twenty twenty like this year, 
Um, they both, Elon and Grimes, had a child. What was interesting was that he, um, Grimes took a while to identify who the child was, and I'm making assumptions here that um, she may have been unsure of who the father was. Um, and I feel like there's a connection there. They, they Online they say they, they both bonded over like a, a joke over artificial intelligence, and I feel like at a deeper level they could also bond over hating their fathers. I feel like there's a there's an underlying um, hatred towards the masculine um, and their fathers. Um, yeah, I've got some quotes here from Elon, and uh, I feel like yeah, you know, let's read these out. So he says he was trying to do good things. So now this ties in with like the schizoid and, and the rigid is that like you you feed information in and then you analyze what is good and where you feel that you're going to be accepted and then you do those things. Not from a heart space. It's all about you. It's all about you. So trying to do good things is he's doing good things that he thinks is he's like the, the shadow component is that like that's how the books told him when he was younger that's what everybody on the internet everybody on the internet and like what he's been rewarded for and loved for in the past is by creating things that people use next quote because they don't need constant interaction, except when we're talking directly, he explains, I find I can be with them and still be working at the same time. So this was, contextually, this was when he was with his kids. And this is like the most intellectual way to look at kids, like as a, a program. You know, I, 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 um, they do not need constant interaction. So when they're talking to me directly, that is when they have my attention. When they're not, I'm ignoring them. I'm focusing on something else, which is like this, the hybrid of like the, the schizoid black and white thinking and the rigid efficiency where like, like emotionally he's just not there with his kids and his kids will turn out with that in mind. Um, he also gets really angry about people that, 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 that make up the false rumors and amplify any negative rumors. So this is the quote. They're jerks who want us to die, Musk elaborates. They're constantly trying to make up false rumors and amplify any negative rumors. It's a really big incentive to lie and attack my integrity. It's really awful, it's... And then he kind of drifts off into, into his intellect. So this is where like the hyperdimensional component can come in. Where, like He's looshing of like the anger at people that talk bad about him and for a rigid like this is really painful like um someone criticizing you and you taking it personally like it's um then you go into your head and you try and concoct like all these ways to, like get back at them um like like social media wars and the social media wise like it's a massive like <laughs> feeding ground of loosh of that hyperdimensional like pain and hexy and like that, to be better than someone by like attacking them with your mind, and I've been guilty of that. So, like, I feel like like when someone like says something to me, like I want to beat them with my mind. So for me, just to take a step away and go and drop into my, drop into my heart and say, is this important? Like, what and what am I here for? Like, what am I doing? Is this going to add anything to the, to the world? And my heart goes, it's not, John. So I like go do something else. There's this thing called physics, which is the scientific method that's really quite effective for figuring out the truth. And so Elon, Elon deeply feels that we live in a simulation. I may have put this in one of my other quotes as well from him. So like physics is like a very pure science. And when I talk about pure sciences, like social sciences are less pure, like biology is a little bit more pure than that. Um, and by purity, I mean how it can be proved like mathematically, like it's solid, like gravity, solid, 
there's a lot of components that we find we, we as humans where we're at right now where we're at evolutionary wise where we're at, at our at our intellect level physics mathematics and geometry are like the purest of all the science but the way he's used truth here i feel like that's where you you merge science and religion um the science not there's avenues of physics like quantum physics and um there's other branches of physics but the quantum is the one that jumps to mind which it's very crazy at at the at the the micro level so yes and no and by using that this is like this i feel that this is like the black and white thinking and the rigid coming in here where it's like physics is truth and I can argue with people efficiently by using it as a method to defend my actions and what I do. Um, this next quote, I felt sorry for my father because my mother had all three kids. He seemed very sad and lonely by himself, so I thought, I can be company. And when I read that, again, like I can still feel it, like my fucking heart broke for this fucking nine-year-old. Like, like, he's so open-hearted to his parents who are quite cold. Um, and then, like, emotionally caretaking for his father. Like, his father didn't know how to make himself happy. So he's probably presented, like, this sadness to, to Elon. Maybe emotionally dumped on Elon because his mother was emotionally unavailable. Um, and then, like, feeling like he maybe wanted to rescue his mum. As well, oh, he's too much. My mum's already got three kids, and I'll be the one that sacrifices myself to go spend time with dad. And like, this is this is the love that children have for their parents. And parents that haven't done any inner work or outer work just are completely oblivious, oblivious to it. Next quote: I started dishing it out as hard as they'd give it to me. This is after he started like learning some martial arts after the bullying, and again, like it. I think it's important to be able to defend yourself. I think it's really important to learn these skills. And in this, this is where his rigid started to develop and crystallize, where you 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 learn to be a better than who you are, and you can rise above like the, the weakness inside of you. However, he's still got that schizoid inside of him which feels weak, so you, you overcompensate with the rigid. Um, more quotes it's not like I don't know what that feels like being in a big empty house and the footsteps echoing through the hallway no one there and no one on the pillow next to you Musk added how do you make yourself happy in a situation like that he then told the publication that as a child that he that was his major wish he never wanted to be alone again like fucking heartbreaking like i see him in this empty house with his old man his old man off doing business shit and like him just being in there by himself or with his parents off doing their own like academic achievements and him just in the house by himself with a book or off doing his own thing like <clears throat> or zero to three crying himself to sleep in the crib or cot like just feeling like there's no one there like no one's coming. Like your your throat is as a child, you're just crying so deeply that you know you you cry yourself to sleep. And those of you that have experienced like a baby crying before, like you know the cry I'm talking about. Like the baby can't barely breathe because it's crying so hard, it wants something so badly. And for schizoids like this can be from the womb or around this zero to three period where you're just terrified. You want something, no one's coming. And you just, you just, you just feel unsafe. So it's just, you're, just, you're just alone. Next quote. I'm not sure I want to be me. He said this in, uh, in Dubai um, and someone asked him, like, what, it's like to, what is it like to be Elon Musk? Those typical questions, you know, like, superfluous like yeah they want that they want that one shot one shot line just to keep everyone entertained i'm not sure i want to be me and he actually i saw him deeply feel this 
and it started to bring up stuff for him. I feel um, like just just in that heart space around like who is he? Like it's not all of what's cracked up to be like four businesses, you know, worshipped your opinion. Your you're you're recruited by the the president to do things and like people look up to you as like a savior and put you on a pedestal like it's a lot of shit to carry for a rigid because the minute one of those the, the the 40 plates that you are spinning on like your your head your hands your shoulders that's a that's a saying spinning plates um you drop one you know people are more than willing to roll you under the bus people that you thought you could rely on that were friendly will drop you under the bus and it's probably something that he experienced in childhood where he was put on a pedestal by his mum or his dad. He did something wrong, like got a lower score than what their parents expected him to. And then, boom, disappointment, failure, criticism. I never want to be alone. That's what I would say. His voice drops to a whisper. I don't want to be alone. So that's a reoccurring theme. That he just doesn't want to be alone. Um, and there's a part of him that, that still feels alone with all his technology, all his money, all his kids, all the relationships that he's had. And it's he's still looking outside of himself to fill himself up. Again, schizoid, a bit of rigid. Um, uh, looking outside of yourself, you just feel empty inside. You abdicate your body. It's safe to be outside of your body. Looking outside of yourself to fill you up. It's also a bit of an orality thing too. How does Elon cope with reality? So, I reckon and feel that he intellectualizes reality as a simulation. And he said this, and that allows him to put God in a box, creation in a box, nature in a box, and everything is like a a, a creation of something that, that is, a, is a piece of software. So he runs his life like a piece of software, treats his kids like software, relationships like software, so by having a that that view that that black and white thinking reality is a simulation god doesn't exist i don't pray or whatever it is like it's it's not real i am not real i am not really here um i could be deleted in an instant i mentioned before that he takes pharmaceuticals to sleep ambien and like if you can't if you're not sleeping that's an issue Like, you're not in your body. You're achieving. Like, you don't feel safe in your body. So, like, it's like taking something to sleep is a, is a red flag that you are pushing beyond your limits. And Ambien's got some crazy-ass side effects as well. You can Google those if you want. Ambien. It's, like a, it's, like a, like it's almost like a hallucinogen. It's got hallucinogenic side effects. Um, I don't think it's sold in Australia. It could they have some other ingredient that, that, that another off the shelf? Um, sorry, another prescription medicine has. Um, escapes into creating solutions and systems, so he copes with reality by escaping into solutions and systems. Like, oh man, instead of feeling this existential anxiety that I have no control, I'm going to create a solution for not having control. Um, escapes into perfectionism perfectionism and striving. Again, this is something that he probably learned from his mum and his dad. And a lot of men do this. A lot of women do this now, where they're very upwardly displaced, they're very heady, um, and they escape into perfectionism and striving. So if you feel like you're about to fail, it's like, no, I'm going to bury that feeling of failure. I'm going to do better. Suppresses feelings. So... Suppresses feelings by not being himself, not acting authentically. Um, Ambien would be part of that. He might, I don't know if he smokes pot as well. Um, or takes, he's in, he's in Cali, so I don't know. Um, escapes into sex and relationships. So you might enjoy trying to solve the problems of relationships. Um, sex would be an awesome escape for him. Um... And schizoids do, schizoids can, and rigids can have amazing sex. Not Might not be heartfelt, but it's still amazing. Um, so in that context, like it could be explosive, could be like fireworks and all this kind of stuff. However, it won't last. And um, 
Yeah. Avoids the childhood existential anxiety of being alone. So it's part of that suppression. So he creates ways to distract himself from feeling that inner child, honoring that inner child. And then um, he copes with reality by looking to others to see how to behave. So you might find a lot of his closest friends, you might copy their behavior or a lot of stuff that he might read in books um, or see other people do online. Um, so he, he looks to others to see how to behave because him acting authentically, he was always rejected for. And so when he starts to act authentically, it's like his body it kind of has this split and rigidity in it. Like he doesn't really, he can feel, he can see that what what's kind of going on in him when he's, he doesn't really know how to, how to react. All right. Saviors as fiends. So what happens here with with men like Elon is like there's this perfect storm of the denial of of their humanity and humanity. So they create solutions which they feel like are so good and so perfect in an intellectual space. But within the intellect, you can only think so many steps ahead. So you try and use your resources to get more steps ahead, like Bill Gates like uses the shares in the donating to the World Health Organization to get more steps ahead. Like Elon starting up Open AI to get more steps ahead of AI. So um, in that space, like you can't win. We've played this game for this entire epoch. You cannot win this. You disconnect from spirituality in this space, like not having that connection and that discernment of of what is coming through. Like you. you can't win it. Um, I feel like they are a they are an existential menace to humanity um, in in this space, and like it, it, I feel it's important to say that like he's like he uh, he means well. However, like when it's like giving giving a child like a lot of resources, and then expecting them to know what they're going to do with it. Like expecting that they know, and then applauding them for whatever little trinket that they create. So, I feel like there's a child that's running Elon's direction, and possibly some hyperdimensional components in that. So, um, choosing partners that abdicate instinct or who are disconnected from feelings. So, like the partners that he chose, like especially for Justine, like I, 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 I the part of her that that both wanted nannies. It's like, well. Like, why do you want to be a mum? Like, the oxytocin component, like, the bonding, like, the breastfeeding, like, like, what are you, what are you doing? Like, um, science, intellect, and morality. So, like, science just has no moral compass at the moment. They have no, intellect has no moral compass. There's no ethics like it's more like wherever the wherever the money is, that's where we need to go. Wherever, um, if China's doing, you know, we've got to be better than China. You know, there's like this. There's no stop. What are we doing? Because there's so much that relies on science. Like it's become the new religion. It has, and anyone that denies that really <laughs> needs to have a look at like people that start questioning like how journals are uh, are published, like the 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 back scratching that goes on, like. Um, that, that where friends review other people's journals and like just rubber stamp. Um, there's stuff that doesn't get double blind tested, and even the concept of like when you watch something, there's a chance that it, it's gonna the, the objectively like watching it, it's gonna change. And then that like, we look to the, and spirituality tries to use it as some kind of um, credibility. And I did a whole podcast on credibility, so I'm not gonna go into it anymore. In the last one on saviors as fiends, it feels like the problem and solution loop where like we keep creating problems with our internet, externalities of like, nah, computers, 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 nah, software, 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 artificial intelligence, like um, neural networks, like, and then we need to, oh, fuck, it's a problem now. <clears throat> need to create a solution. This is this continuous, and maybe that's, that, maybe that is the cosmic joke of technology is like this this problem solution loop and like for me like I can only talk to you by the technology 
but available. Like, I've got like a fucking LED ring light here. I've got like a microphone set up. I've got my laptop here. You know, I've got like a, an audio USB interface, which can turn like the microphone signal into a digital signal and end up so I can feed it into my computer. So it's like a bloody webcam up there so I can like have a good good picture and then I'm going to publish it on the World Wide Web so more people can listen to me drone on about <laughs> what I think and what I feel about what's going on in the world. So like, like it's, it's a, it's a double bind. I feel it's a double bind. And then the anarcho technovists that want to try and return us to the, the wooden age or the stone age. I feel like they're just angry because they can't reconcile that technology is a thing that we need to learn to love and learn how to operate it and choose it from a heart space. Sorry, I had more saviors on fiends. Saviors as fiends. I thought that was the last slide that I was working through. Ah, here's some great questions. I'm glad I came up with these. What are you creating in the name of your mother and father? So like Elon, like he's a, like I'll jump into human design. He's a manifesting generator. But what are you creating in the woundings, woundings that you got from your mother and father? Like... Um, Elon's father owned an emerald mine in South Africa. You know, that's like mining the earth for resources. Elon's doing the same with lithium, feeling like it's the right thing to do. And his father probably, excuse me, his father probably felt like it was the right thing to do. And then his mother, like the relationships that he's creating, like... Her, his mum was emotionally detached. I feel was very emotionally de- emotionally detached. So he's choosing partners which are just as emotionally detached. Are you looking to sell out your soul's purpose? So like, did you really have a soul's purpose, or do you, are you just wanting to like create a business to sell it off to make millions and then you know retire on that? Like, what's like? Are you really here to work? Like, are you willing to make sure that your business? is run how your heart needs it to run. Is your framing of reality built on an intellectual foundation? So like with Muskie, he, um, like again, like the, the concept of the simulation, like everything is a simulation because it's too hard to go down that spiritual rabbit hole. And it fucking is. Like it's, there's so much intangible intangibleness in the spiritual realm. It's like, what is going on? So I can understand why you would choose that. However, when you do, that's what you create things out of that that thought form. Who have you designated or abdicated your responsibility responsibility for yourself to? So like I feel that the ones of us that have that have put like all this hope into Elon and like, oh he's doing such a good thing, like solar power, solar power, boring, boring, um, SpaceX, SpaceX and Neuralink, Neuralink. Like what what is in you that you are giving to him that you are not doing in yourself? Who do you put on pedestals because they make you feel safe or inspired? Like we put men and women like this on pedestals because they make us feel okay to be doing what we're doing those these are just questions to like like who do you who do you put on pedestals um politicians particularly teachers mentors gurus who do you see fragmented parts of your shadow in um so do you see the part in you in musk that's like the entrepreneur the go-getter you know, he's putting his finger up at authority, you know, like the anarchist. So who are you projecting and, and, and putting yourself into? So you allow them to continue unchecked. <clears throat> How buying into narratives is a long game for abdicating authority. So narratives what did i mean by this buying into narratives is a long game for abdicating authority oh like um look if we look at musk's like is is is, like what he's done is like he created paypal it's tick you know he did that for humanity you know and then you've got like tesla you know he's doing this for for humanity it's like and then 
to all these like little milestones and waypoints of like now he's doing all these things for humanity. It's like you kind of like turn your back on him, as in like checking up on what he's doing. So oh he did those two things, which is this is a bias. Oh, I did those things. There's a good chance he, all of his future projects are going to be. He's going to have reality in mind. Not necessarily the case. And then discernment and love. So, like for me and in my spiritual practice, like um, to work out, like to love people. I mean, there's one thing to like spray hate, which uh, the spiritual community does really well um, around like Bill Gates and like um, the guy that owns Amazon. I'll probably do a pod- uh, podcast on him too. I'm not feeling it right now. And then Musk, like just spewing all this hate, like. Um, I think to 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 really discern, you can use this on anybody. Like if you wanted to do it now, you can. Um, so if you're driving, don't do this. So if you're doing operating machinery, don't do this. So if you're in a space that you can just be in your own energy and close your eyes, then you can do this. And if you can't, just do it later. So just take a deep breath and breathe into your heart and feel all the love for yourself, like all the, the moments in your life where you've taken care of yourself, where you've, you've done things that have honoured your being, your body. Now just amplify that ten times and feel it radiating and pulsing in your heart. Take another deep breath and go into your heart and just feel all the love in your heart and around your body. Now, in this space, continue to breathe normally and just picture Elon Musk in front of you. And from a heart space, just send some love to Elon's way and, and feel what comes back. Like feel what comes back from Elon. Like what, what, what messages do you get back? Like what energy do you get back? And you can do that with anyone. And... Um, you can feel into what what's going on in them from that heart space. Uh, it's a use, very useful tool. So I'd love to hear what you got back. So flick me a message sometime. I'd love to hear what energy that you got back. Now, if Elon was my client, Elon Musk was my client, um, and he wanted to like find out what's going on in his life, first thing I would do would be Encourage him to connect to the earth and nature. Like, like just stop and, and um, yeah, just connect to nature. And I encourage him to do some grounding as well. Like, just reduce this technology that he has around him. Like, get rid of his phone. Like, just unplug. Like, just trust that his business is going to be okay. And if it's not which is a challenge for him because the last time he took a vacation, he was he was thrown off um, the board of one of his companies. So I get that fear. However, like, this is about his life now. This is about his kids. This is about him and his relationships with himself. So I feel like he needs to feel encouraged to get safely into his body, feel safety in his body. Um, so I do, like, various meditation techniques and and grounding techniques. And then help him to feel. So encourage feeling, encourage expression, and access the the suppressed hurt from caregivers and old relationships and grief. Um, I feel like he he would he would really need to to f- make space in his life to do this. Like, not be so involved in his companies. Um. And come into a heart space and ask himself, like, what do I want? Like, he maybe only has like maybe twenty, thirty years left, unless he tries to upload himself into the into the web, and then who knows what that'll create. Like, it is, he doesn't have much time left. I feel his body, his body is, <laughs> his body is busy. His head is busy. All right, human design wise. So there's two times that I grab for him. Uh, one, he's a he's a he's a hermit heretic, so two five with a solar plexus and emotional authority. 
and then a martyr heretic, um, the sacral. So that fifth line is common in both, which means that he's got the heretic, he's got a projection field, so people will project something onto him without really understanding who he is. And um, I see that. Like, oh, there's a good chance I could be doing it right now. So um, people will either see him as like an angel, a devil, or a nobody, or whatever it is, which which can make you feel it's really hard for a fifth line being to know who they are because they've been told by so many people something that they're not. Um, uh, his incarnation cross is the right angle cross of service too. Um, I'm just going to read this out. Um, the design of your cross is to help guide and correct others. With your lead energy coming out of the 52nd gate, you are going to do your guiding work from a point of stillness. Like a guidance counsellor sitting in an office, people will seek you out to hear your advice and opinions about their situation. It is important to follow your type and strategy when offering your opinions and corrections as this will produce more positive results. I don't feel he does that. I don't feel. I feel like he's operating in his not self, which is part of his experiment in this body. You know, like he's he is who he is, um, and um, yeah. So he's a manifesting generator. I'm not going to go into that. However, I will go into open head and open ajna. So I mentioned I did this in my last podcast, speaking about like open head and open ajnas. I think it was last one. Yeah, it was last one. And basically. He shouldn't be researching. He shouldn't be doing anything that's like um something auto played on my phone. Was checking the time. Um, he should not be looking at researching. A lot of his stuff is just going to come from spirit. So he's highly susceptible to getting ideas from the hyper dimension. Highly susceptible, and so a lot of his stuff that he's creating right now could be a long term game to be quite destructive for humanity. So if you're an open head and open Asian person that has like schizoid tendencies or rigid, rigid tendencies, I'd like, you need to connect to nature, motherfucker, because like, you're living your not self and it's detrimental to humanity. So who is Elon Musk? Elon Musk. Who is Elon Musk? Um, I've got a lot of love for the man. Like he's gone through a lot. And I feel like a lot of conventional therapies aren't going to help him. He might even feel like there's nothing wrong with him. And the schizoid and rigids tend to not feel like there's anything wrong with them. Like he's gone from relationship to relationship. And in that, like he, I, I doubt he's done much inner work to try and establish like what is going on for him. Uh, I feel like um, he is the collective shadow of... The spiritual people that don't that hate technology, like the parts of you that that feel like all technology is from the devil, like you are feeding him, you are feeding people like Musk. So, if you want to like change Musk, you got to change yourself. Change yourself to change men like Musk. Get in your body. Stop being off with the off with the fairies and off with whoever it is energetically. Stop astral traveling. Like, be in your goddamn body. You're on Earth. Be in your body. It's the equivalent. You, you, Elon Musk is the equivalent of the intellectual astro astro traveler. Like that's the way I see it. Um, who else is Elon Musk? Just a man that's trying to make a difference in the world with the way that his parents taught him how. The world rewards him for doing what he's doing, and in, in, he's just a child that's looking to be loved. He doesn't want to be alone. Like, he just want, a man just wants to be held and just told that he's not alone, that his feelings matter, like, um, that he matters in the world. So, that feels like all I want to share on Elon. If you got this far, big love, and I highly encourage you to share it if this resonates with you. Um, tell your friends about it, and hit me up if you want some um, coaching or some kind of therapy, or if you want to learn more about yourself, um, or join me twice a week 
I've got a, like, um, a shadow walkers circle that I do with people that people want to look at their shadow and, and feel and um, inquiry into their underpinnings. And we talk about anything from sex to parents to children to uh, bullying to um, hating your boss, the whole gambit. And it's private and it's great if you want to live out your true self and look at your conditioning. So big love and thank you so, so, so much for listening. Um, I open my heart to you for opening your ears and um, I open my heart to you just in general because you are an incredible human being in a body that's experiencing this planet for a while. So, bye.